Hello everybody. Welcome to our show. Our guest today is a multifaceted personality. He is an author, a golfer, a guitarist, a philanthropist, an entertainer, and all at the age of 12. Yes, you heard that right, at the age of 12. A sixth grader with Perry Middle School, this is Arnav Kopala from our own city, Dallas. Welcome, Arnav, to our show. Thank you so much for having me here. Sure, great. So, Arnav, your second book is out and it's published. It's all on the shelf. How do you feel about it? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Well, I feel so confident. My first book, Pentagon Springs, had such great reviews. And my, my second book, I have no nervousness. I just feel so confident about my second book. Great, that's wonderful, and we wish you all the best for it. I read some great reviews about your books. So um, what is your book, uh, Breaking Boundaries, all about? Uh, could you tell us something about the characters in the book? Yes. My book, my book, Breaking Boundaries, is about the journey that Jack and his friends go through. And as you can see by the name, it's just about what boundaries will they break through. And it's just like the journey and like the magic. And this book is about science fantasy, just magic, science fiction, all of that kind of stuff. And my love for particle physics is very shown in this book. I've been intrigued in particle physics and it's, um, I like to put the things I really like into this book. So it's, it's about, you know, uh, teleportation, some of those mysteries that scientists have always wanted to, you know, kind of find out. And it's, it's really, um, okay, I fumbled, I fumbled, sorry. It's okay, that's okay. <laughs> sorry. That's okay, that's okay. just okay. continue. Yeah. Um, so the question is? So are the characters about, uh, in your books, uh, how did you think oh, about so those characters? About the, do you want me to care, mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. characters? Continue with too. that, yeah. Well, my second book is just about what boundaries will Jack and the gang break through? And let's say like it's like about like particle physics and just kind of the stuff you know some of the scientists just really like to know about and my love for particle physics is uh i hope clearly shown in this book and so let's talk a little bit about the characters um one of the main characters jack he has like a lively personality in fact he comes from a different dimension it's called calamine x and this dimension is also like a city and a dimension too so as he comes from this dimension, he travels from one dimension to another, and the other dimension is our dimension. And it's his experiences and challenges throughout school, and that's the introduction, and that's what my first book is about, introducing Jack into this whole new world, just like how I was introduced into this whole new book world. And Great, the second book you. is, exactly, and the second book was about just how how his friends have been influenced about magic because as we all know everybody's is kind of intrigued about magic when we find something new it's it's almost surprising and very interesting and we'd like to know more about it so as jack's friends are also intertwined with the magic it's basically like what boundaries will they break through and this book is bigger and better and more intense than my first book. Great imagination and fantasy at the, uh, your age is generally, you know, around fairy tales, but you are actually exploring into scientific fiction and, and particle accelerator, which is really commendable, uh, Arnav. So uh, from Pentagon Springs and then Breaking Boundaries, how did you come up with these interesting names? I'm, I'm really curious because, uh, you know, did somebody help you with this or is it again creation of your own mind? Well, it's a creation of my own mm. mind. Uh, Pentagon Springs, uh, yeah, just like anything to do with DC and you know Pentagon. And in fact, five is my lucky number. So Pentagon is how I came up from the Pentagon Springs. And I just wanted to find a word that kind of flowed with Pentagon, something that was like a city name. So I just thought of Springs. And Pentagon Springs, it seemed nice to me, and that's how Pentagon Springs came. For breaking boundaries, the summary about the book or like the whole gist is like, what boundaries will they break through? 
And so I thought, what better name than Breaking Boundaries? Great, again, well thought through. So generally kids of your age are, you know, either writing poems, short stories, essays, but you have actually come up, uh, you know, with, with the book. Your first book was published when you were just 11. And I believe you started writing at the age of seven. Mm -hmm. So could you talk more about your interest in writing and how did your parents react when, when they first heard you that you're going to write a book? Well, my parents were surprised. In fact, I think they saw it coming because I started writing at the age of seven. And every day when I was seven, I used to have a composition notebook. And every day I would write a story, a fairy tale. I just write a story at least one page. And that was the foundation of my writing. And from there, I just started, you know, building up on my stories and my imagination increased thousandfold. And I got to the point where I was able to have enough ma imagination to compile it all into one book. And that was my first book, Pentagon Springs. Wonderful, a lot of imagination at that age, I must say. So did your parents uh, read the book? Uh, who read the book first when you wrote Pentagon Springs? Was it your mom, your dad? How did they react to it? Did they have any feedback on your book? That's a really good fact, uh, question. In fact, my parents didn't even read my book. As like any mom is, even though my mom is such an avid reader, she didn't want to judge my book and she didn't want to influence like the pristine thoughts in my head. And she wanted my imagination to be uninterrupted and just focusing on into these books. And I really, um, I, I really um, just appreciate uh, that she, she uh, encourages me. And just like that, even my dad too uh, does the same thing. And that's what really kept me striving really hard to write these books. Great, I think we as parents have some great tips here. Uh, that we should not force our kids with our own ideas, but let their ideas grow and, and let them grow creatively. That's great, and I think uh, we should really appreciate your parents for that. So my next question to you is then, who inspires you? Like, is it your mom, your dad, or anybody in the school? Who really inspires you to think through like this and you know come up with these great ideas? Well, I think my mind is the answer to that question. Um, Everything came from my mind, my imagination, and my parents were there to help me. And ever since I was seven, they started helping me build my writing um, ability. And so I could also say like my parents always, you know, were kind of like my inspiration. And they helped me build my own inspiration. So uh, all, my, all my imagination uh, was the basis, the foundation for these books. Without my imagination, none of these books would have been possible. Wonderful, that's, that's really great. So uh, apart from writing books and having these great creative ideas, I think you are into several other activities. You, you play golf, you play the guitar, and uh, you are also participating in several activities. And as an entertainer, you, you uh, MC a lot of shows. So how do you manage to balance all of this? I know that you are from a leap school, so there is a lot of academic pressure also. How do you balance this? Well, it was pretty tough, I have to say. In the first year, as I was going through, I was introduced into a whole new different world. And it was kind of surprising too, seeing what was there, how the process was. Everything was just so fascinating and especially new to me. And as humans are, we're always so curious to find out how everything works. And in doing so, it was pretty tough. However, after the success of my second book, things started to smooth out and somewhat normalize. My PR manager, uh, Mr. Brooks, he handles my public relations. Uh, my agent, Miss Vernon, she handles my commercials, magazines, and my on-screen appearances. Mm -hmm. uh, my editorial board, uh, consisting of Miss C and Miss Robinson, they're the ones who kind of help me in my book side of the world. And most of all, my parents are always there, especially my mom, who's there to coordinate everything and fit it into my schedule. Wonderful, that is a lot of work for a 12 year old, I must say. So um, my, my next question to is, 
to you is that uh, we, we have so many uh, activities that you mentioned about. You're so popular already. Uh, you have uh, attained president's uh, recognition for academic excellence, and you've been signing books uh, for uh, you know great personalities. With all of this, uh, how does it feel? You, and you have to be honest here, OK? How have your friends been so far? Uh, do you have any uh, pressure of, of being this celebrity kid and who's so popular these days? Has anything changed in terms of your relation with your friends? Well, it's kind of a little bit hard on my friends sometimes. There's like a little rough patches here and there. But otherwise, I just have like many friends who just like stick to me and they're just like encouraging me and just giving, just encouraging me to write more books. Okay, so thank you to our Nav's friends because having friends and having them uh, support all the time is equally important. So let's let's look at the other side of Arnav. I, I heard that uh, you love to watch movies with your uh, family. So what's the latest movie uh, that you watched? And do you watch Bollywood, Tollywood, or English movies? I do watch English movies. Um, some of them just are pretty cool. In fact, the the latest like Telugu movie I've seen is a Bahubali uh, conclusion. Yes, nobody wants to miss that, right? <laughs> yes, it is. Um, even though some people, some friends are saying, oh, it's pretty bad. But in my opinion, everybody should see that movie. Um, it was amazing. And in fact, all of that is also kind of an imagination too. And just how the way it's created and just like, it was so intriguing to me. And uh, how do I say this? Um, watching that movie has given me so many new ideas. and. That's probably the one and only movie I'll ever see. Wonderful. So talking about Bahubali, how about superheroes? Do you have any superhero that inspired you to write your books? Is Jack a creation of any superhero that inspired you? Yes. Like any author, probably the author of Superman. Their heroes, probably Superman. For me, uh, the superhero I created, Jack and his friends, they're, they're my superheroes. And they're everything that I probably ever wanted them to be. They have magic powers, they're nice, and I think it's even cooler that they're all a figment of my imagination, and I brought them back to life. Great, so you actually gave life to your superhero. That's, that's wonderful. So uh, I also heard your mom say in one of the interviews that you know, for relaxation and for fun, you actually read chemistry books which is very, very unheard of of kids of your age. You know, I mean, I wouldn't do that. But uh, so what do you do for fun? Do you just read books? Or is there any other side of Arnav that we do not know and the audience would be interested to know? Yes. Uh, I usually watch TV sometimes. Uh, there are like a couple episodes here and there that I really like to watch. Uh, I, I love to like make slime. It's probably um, silly, but like a lot of my friends love making slime and I just think yes slime. I know that mm -hmm. I know that I have a middle a middle schooler too who makes slimes and I think they even exchange that with kids right so you are also into that mm -hmm. um I just think like slime is like cooking so like you know I, I even like cooking too just like slime is just really cool I mean just like the way it looks you know there's so many kinds of slime um I do origami I, I just like how you can just take a paper just like a post it note and turn it into something magnificent like I made like an icosahedron out of like 30 sheets of paper but you take 30 sheets of paper and you can make something you can make anything you want and that's just like your imagination you can it just like paper just is moldable just like you know imagination so I also do origami too uh, and sometimes I do crafts too for an example, uh, sometimes my mom, you know, she'll give me like small crafts here and there. Sometimes I go to Michael's and I buy stuff there and I make my own things because uh, buying things from stores, uh, it takes the fun out of it. So, and anything that's creative and fun, it's my thing to do. So I think uh, one word to use to uh, describe Arnav would be budding with creativity. 